Huzzah. Looks like we got about uh, what one minute left before we get started. Sure, let's give them one more minute. That's a good idea. Looks like we still have a few not here, but. Well, you know how internet connections are and True. classrooms. Is, is that day after that extra day off too, you know, you forget right. that it's actually Tuesday today and not Monday. Yeah. So. Or this could be the day they decided to do a surprise fire drill. Yeah, I like those. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. Welcome everybody. So glad to see you here this morning. Take the time out of your busy schedule. I know that sometimes it can be a little hectic. So appreciate you being here today. Miss Santiago's class, you guys ready to uh, get started this morning? Are you excited over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A couple of them back there in the background are yeah, excited. Yeah. Appreciate did they did they get to watch the the video before they came, I wonder. Yes. Cool, cool. Maybe, maybe that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Just had someone else join. Oh, there's Miss. Oh, that Miss Saldivar. Yep. Yep, first grade Getting her in there. In yep. the house. Getting her in, giving her Love speaking and camera privileges here. All Love right. It. Yay. All right. What do you think? Okay. I think we should get started. I think we'll. I agree. Uh, other people show up, we will definitely invite them in. But I think it's that time. Your your time is precious. So let's get you started this morning. So welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you with us again um, this morning. Uh, Tammy and I are so excited to be back with you guys um, and then inviting some new folks in as well. Um, so glad to see you all here this morning. Uh, today we're going to uh, do some Minecraft with uh, English language arts, uh, work on some inferring uh, with habitats with Minecraft. And um, so we'll just get started with some introductions. Uh, I'd just like to welcome you. My name is Mr. Hawkins. I teach third grade. Uh, coming out of Boise, Idaho this morning. Um, I have uh, been teaching for 20 plus years, uh, mostly in the elementary, um, first grade through fifth grade, that range. Um, most recently in third grade. And um, just give you a little visual where I'm at. Uh, as mentioning this morning, you know, today is a uh, Balming uh, 36 degrees here this morning. Uh, no snow where I'm at right now, but just up on the mountains, there's definitely a lot of snow. And uh, we spent the day yesterday up there skiing, and um, it was kind of crazy because it was cloudy down here, but up there, blue skies and uh, nice, uh, you know, chilly afternoon. But we had a great time, and I'm so excited to be here this morning um, bringing you Minecraft in the classroom. Uh, I use it in my classroom. As much as possible, students. Uh, you know, it's it's awesome and and a great way for you to uh, share with your teachers things that you've learned. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tammy uh, Ms. Dunbar. Hello, hello. I'm Sorry. Tammy Dunbar, and I'm coming to you uh, live from Manteca, California. I've been teaching for 21 years, and uh, like Mr. Hawkins, use Minecraft in my classroom. I'm primarily a fifth grade teacher. I'm teaching the last two years here at the online academy, so you can see this is not a background. This is my actual classroom uh, when I present to my students. And here, this will give you kind of an idea, kids, where Manteca is. It's really in the heart of California, in the Central Valley, and uh, we're actually equidistant from San Francisco and Yosemite 
Yosemite National Park as the crow flies. So that means not taking roads. That means if I were a bird flying directly to each place, they're about 75, 80 miles uh, away from us. Of course, San Francisco to the west and uh, Yosemite National Park to the east. Matter of fact, on my wedding ring, I've even got El Capitan from Yosemite National Park because it's a very place, a very special place to all of us. So let's go ahead and get started today and talk about Minecraft mavens. For those of you who are new or who are not new, if you go to the next slide, what is a Minecraft maven? A maven is an expert. Go ahead and click and let's talk about mavens. Mavens are people who are super skilled and good at Minecraft. That's what we're talking about when we say Minecraft maven. So if you go to the next slide, what exactly does a Minecraft maven do? Well, a Minecraft maven is someone who, click, is comfortable opening up Minecraft, creating a world, accessing inventory, knows how to use the codes to change night to day and get rid of that pesky rain, and being enthusiastic to show other people how to use Minecraft. So right now in your classrooms, raise your hand really high if you are a Minecraft maven, because your teacher needs to know that you are one of the people they can count on to call upon to help if there are any problems or someone doesn't know how to fly or get out of water or know how to unbreak break something or you know so raise your hand up high and teachers look around and take a note because these are the kids that are going to help you out we have students from my class here today if you notice on the attendees there are lots of my minecraft mavens who have joined us to help us out because sometimes we don't know all the answers and it's okay for your kids to help you it's awesome when they can so minecraft mavens we're going to be counting on you because and next slide it's all about digital citizenship and being a good digital citizen. But what are the rules when we're in Minecraft? Well, obviously we want to be respectful when we're on the computer, kind to other people. And of course in Minecraft, you got to think about how other people are feeling, especially if you're collaborating with them in a Minecraft world. If you think about how you'd like to be treated when you're online, that's how you treat other people. It's the same thing in person. So if we go to the next slide, think about if you were building something really terrific in Minecraft, and then suddenly someone came in and blew it up. That wouldn't be kind. That's not good digital citizenship. That's not empathy for other people. So what we want to make sure on the next slide is that we are thoughtful for other people, that if someone asks for help, we give it. If someone wants you to stop doing something, you stop it. If they say stop, stop. If you're working to a group, talk together so you can collaborate. Share your great ideas. Ask for help. We cannot emphasize that enough, nor can your teachers. If you have a question, ask. There are no dumb questions. They're all good questions because we want to help you stay on the right path. Raise a quiet hand waiting for someone to come and help you, especially when those Minecraft mavens are busy. And remember, every test is a reading test. My class knows this one by heart. Read any instructions, listen to any prompts, because once you know what you're being asked to do, it's a lot easier to do it. So those are kind of the rules for today. And of course, as with any good lesson, next slide, we have objectives and we have, today we're going to be talking about, as Mr. Hawkins said, animal habitats. So hopefully you were able to watch the video ahead of time. We do have one to share with you today that's short. We're going to be using what we've learned about habitats and showing what we know inside of Minecraft, which is going to be really exciting. This actually aligns to your state standards, which I know you students don't care about, but we teachers do because we know it's something important for you to know. So we're really going to be covering some important stuff today. And on the next slide, you'll notice that we're going to have new vocabulary because every test is a reading test and the more words you know, the better you get at it. So let's talk about habitat. Now, my fifth grade students have used this word already and hopefully if you watch the films or probably you've heard this before, you've probably been hearing this all through <clears throat> your education because the habitat is a place where a plant or animal lives and grows. My habitat is Manteca. Mr. Hawkins' habitat is Idaho. You all are in Texas, but a habitat is more than just a place. It's really a climate, isn't it? So if you look at some of these images, you can see there are mountains, high mountains with snow, like they've gotten Boise, right? Grasslands, like where I'm at. I'm in the Valley of California, so it is flat, flat, flat. It's really grassy. Um, there are rainforests, there are deserts, all kinds of different habitats. And think about it for a minute. You find specific kinds of animals in specific kinds of habitats. You're not going to find a dolphin in the grasslands, are you? Right? You're not going to find a giraffe in the uh, polar regions. So certain animals need specific habitats. So habitat is where an animal lives. The next vocabulary word is 
Schema. Okay, I want everybody to say that word with me. Schema. Say schema. schema. Okay, I didn't hear you very well. I need to hear one more time. Say schema. schema. I know it's a schema. fancy word, isn't it? But it just means what you know, your background knowledge. If your teacher's ever done one of those old-fashioned KWL charts, what you know, that's what the K stands for. And you know a lot. You've been alive for a while, so you know a lot of things. So that's what you bring to any kind of educational experience is your background knowledge. Like, for example, I know how to work a computer, right? So if something goes wrong, I, I know the things I need to check. I have some background knowledge. Uh, we're going into habitats. We've already done some reading. We have some background knowledge. We know the habitat where we live, right? So we've got some background knowledge, some schema that we bring to it. So that's all schema is, fancy educational word for your background knowledge. Next up, we have inference, or if you're using it as a verb, to infer. An inference is a noun. Infer is a verb. It's to make a guess. That's all it is. We use big words in education, but actually these are really good words that you'll be using all the way through high school and college. Infer means make a guess. So for example, if you look at the picture up here, you can see there's a woman and there's a boy and he's got a bat and she's got a glove. And then that person whose hand I can see looks like they're holding a, a ball inside the glove. Okay, so that's the evidence. That's what I'm seeing. And my background knowledge, well, let's see, a bat, a glove, and a ball. What do I know about that? Well, I know that I like baseball, and I know I've played baseball, and I have a bat and a ball and a glove, so that's what I used to play baseball. So what can I infer, guess, from this picture? I can infer that the family is playing baseball, okay? So they don't actually say, we are playing baseball. But looking at the picture, we can infer that, which also means we are making an educated guess at what something is, what's happening in a picture, okay? So we look at the clues, we look at what we already know, and we put them together to make an educated guess to infer or to make an inference, okay? So that's an important word. Infer just means to make an educated guess. And then last but not least, evidence, okay? You've got to have evidence. So if we... <laughs> <laughs> Can we Sorry. go back to that? That's okay. No problem. I, I will need you to click eventually, though, because we've got some yeah. things that pop in. So if you read what we sent you about the lions, the super hunters, you've got a lot of evidence. So, for example, <clears throat> we read that lions need shade and that they climb trees. Hmm. Lions need shade and climb trees. What gives shade? Well, lions aren't going to put up tents. Trees naturally give shade. So I can infer that. Click. A lion's habitat needs trees to climb and give shade, okay? So if I know they need that, then I can sort of make some inferences about what they need in their habitat. Okay, so let's look at the second one. Lions are meat eaters or carnivores. Arr, they like meat. So think about it just for a minute. You can call it out. What do they need in their habitat if they're meat eaters? right? Go ahead and click it. If they're meat eaters, they need other animals to hunt for food in their habitat, right? So these are making inferences based on what we know, right? Carnivores, meat eaters, well, they got to have meat, otherwise they can't eat. Lions live in the savanna. Hmm. What do I know about the savanna? Well, here's another thing that my students know. If you don't know what a savanna is, ask, look it up on the internet. What's the savanna? Well, Click it for me if you would, Mr. Hawkins. It's a large open grassy space. So if lions live in the savanna, they need large open grassy spaces, okay? Lastly, lion cubs are born in a den. If you uh, watch the video, you know that that's where they're born. Well, a den, what's a den? Uh, oh, I know. It's like a big cave, right? Well, if they're born in a den, then I don't think a lion can dig its own cave. So a lion in its habitat must need some kind of cave-like place where it can go into. Let's, let's see. <gasps> okay. It must include a den as shelter to keep their cubs safe. So there's got to be a place in the habitat where they can hide to keep their young safe. So we look at what's in the text. We take what we know and we put them together to make an inference or a guess. And we use evidence to help our schema to make an inference. Oh, I just used all three words, Mr. Hawkins. 
Bonus points for you, Mrs. Dunbar. I'm feeling like bonus points for me too. All right, so those are our vocabulary words for today. And of course, kindness is always a vocabulary word, but we've already gone over that. So I sense something coming up on me, Mr. Hawkins. What's next? Looks, <gasps> uh-oh, what is that guy? Oh, it's a creeper. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have played Minecraft before, you know what this guy is. And when you see this guy, he definitely gets your attention because... If you get too close, something might happen that you really don't want to. So this guy is going to get your attention. So I bring this up because uh, students, teachers, uh, mostly students, when you see this creeper slide, that means that we need your attention. Because I know that getting into Minecraft and playing Minecraft is exciting, and it's hard to pull away from. And once you're in, you just want to stay in there and build and build and build. So uh, when you see this creeper slide, that, or you hear us say creeper, that means that we need your attention back. So we really need your eyes up on the screen. We need to talk to you, and um, we need to get ready to have you know some conversations about um, what we've been working on in Minecraft. So students, when you see this creeper slide, I want you to freeze. Maybe push the escape button on your keyboard so you're not in Minecraft playing still. Um, and we just need you back with us so uh, we can have those discussions. Because Minecraft is really cool but we're really still here to learn and to show our teachers what we learn. So uh, we need to be able to have those conversations. Okay, deal? All right, give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. It's good. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so uh, today we're going to take a look at um, a video from San Diego because you guys are going to get the opportunity to think like a zoo person. So I'm going to start this video. Uh, Ms. Dunbar, if you can't hear it, will you please let me know? Absolutely. Choose. Um, just kidding. Hang on. Yay. San Diego Zoo is a great zoo, by the way. Speaking as a Californian. No, can't hear Dr. Zoo Little. All right. Let me stop sharing. I, it did, I did get a message that there was an issue with the sound, so I'm going to reshare. Turn the sound back on. And see, this is also, we're very appreciative because we all know technology does strange and unusual things sometimes. So we appreciate your patience. Okay, let's try this one more time. Famous San Diego Zoo. Oh yeah, there you go. You won't believe the stories that I have got to tell you and the amazing animals that I have met on my many adventures. I cannot wait to share all my stories with you. So buckle up because we're about to bring the zoo to you. Well, today's episode, we have got special guests for you to meet. We've got some videos to show you. And of course, there's going to be some jokes. Everything is going to be about animals. But before we get started, I need to hear your favorite animal. Just go ahead, shout out your favorite animal. Let me know what it is. Oh, I'm far away. You need to be a bit louder than that. Oh, I heard lion. Yep, lions. Rhinos, rhinos are good. Monkeys. A lot of people like monkeys. They're so much fun to watch. Let me tell you a secret. My favorite animal are the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. That's right, I love cockroaches. Okay, whatever your favorite animal is, it's gonna be a wild ride and we're gonna have so much fun together. Are you ready to find out what today's theme is? Okay, I'm gonna need a drum roll, please. Drum roll, bum, 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 bum. drum roll. Today's theme is bum, 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 bum. the place where animals live. Do you know what those two words are that make up the place where animals live? That's right. Today's theme is animal habitat. Okay, let's define animal habitats. An animal habitat is made up of... Oh. A habitat is... Ah. Oh, I can't remember. You know, I'm going to need some help, and I know just the celebrity who can help me out. This is someone who you can see at the world-famous San Diego Zoo. Her brother is at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's put your hands together, because let's welcome to the San Diego Zoo Kids Corner, Roberta the Zebra, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Roberta, welcome to the San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. We desperately need your help. 
you have to tell us what is a habitat and what makes up a habitat and how animals move about the habitat. Can you help us with that, Roberta? Oh, and Roberta, we need one more thing. We need a good animal joke. Deal? Deal. Hi, Dr. Z. I'm here in my habitat. My habitat is the African savanna. Now, a habitat is made up of four things. Food, water, shelter, and space. Now, in a habitat, there's food for me to eat. As a zebra, I like to eat grass and hay. Lots of veggies. Well, and then there's lions. Lions like to eat zebras. Ooh. Well, there's also water to drink. And some animals drink a lot of water, like elephants. And some animals drink none, like koalas. I love to drink water. Now, shelter is important, too. That's some place that I can hide or get shade from the beating sun and pouring rain. But sometimes we just get a little wet. And space is important too, but I'm not talking about outer space, although it would be cool to be the first zebra on the moon. Space is an area that I can move around in. As a zebra, we need a lot of space because if my mom and my dad and my stinky brother Robert all stayed in the same place, we need up all the hay. So it's important for us to keep moving. Now, all four of these elements make up every animal's habitat, and each animal has a different habitat. Okay, try to test me. Shout out your favorite animal. I will take the top suggestions and yell out their habitat. Oh, I heard polar bear. That's right, polar bears live in the Arctic, and they eat Seals, that's the food in their habitat. And there's definitely lots of water up there. Polar bears, well, they shelter inside of ice caves. Oh, I heard lion. Well, lions live in the African savanna and they eat meat. And yeah, they also drink water from the watering hole, just like I do. And they also shelter in the trees and they take up a lot of space in that African savanna. Oh, I heard someone hoot out owl. They're really cool. They're small and love to eat bugs and they get water from rivers. Now what's really cool is they shelter in tunnels made by ground squirrels or other diggers that have left their homes. And their space is right here in San Diego. Whew. That was hard. I think I have a headache. Dr. Zulittle, you wanted a joke? Well, what's black and white and red all over? A sunburnt zebra. <laughs> Isn't that the best joke you heard all day? Thanks, Roberta. That was so helpful. Habitats are made up of food, water, shelter, and what's that last one? Space, that's right. Good job. The joke, not so much. We'll have to get. Okay, thanks for sharing that. All right, so today you guys are going to get the opportunity to think about your animal that you read about. For some of you, it was the lion. Um, some of you got to choose your own. And I want you to think about the habitat that that animal needs because you are going to think like a zookeeper and you are going to build your own habitat for the animal that you studied. Um, and so we're going to get ready to jump into Minecraft and start that build. But before we do, I just want to introduce you to a couple more vocabulary words. Um, and because one of the ones I'm going to mention is crosshairs. And so in, when you get into Minecraft, you're going to see this little plus sign out on your screen and your mouse controls that. And that's called your crosshair. So when I refer to that, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then the second thing is this hotbar. Um, I do want you to know when I say hotbar, I'm referring to these down here. And we're going to talk about what that means and what those are. But just know that when I talk about the hotbar, this is what I'm referring to. Okay? 
Um, if you're on an iPad, controls look a little bit different. Um, on your screen, you're going to see uh, the arrows on the side. This is for your moving. And then on the right side, you'll see that jump button. So just be aware of those controls on there um, as you move around in Minecraft. Now, raise your hand if you're ready to get into Minecraft and get started. Because I am. I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm ready to build a habitat. Um, so let's um, go ahead and let's open up Minecraft. Um, let's start that world. Let's get, get into Minecraft. Um, however you get there, you know, for me, I have to search for it and then make sure I sign in and then um, that'll bring me to my play screen in Minecraft. And so that's where I want you guys to be. I know that some of you are there already. So I'm going to back up because I'm going to get into Minecraft myself. Um, but we definitely want to be in um, this section right here. Okay, so we're ready to get started in Minecraft. But before we click play... Uh, we're going to go into settings because, trust me, your teachers will appreciate this. And oh, yeah. we want happy teachers, so they'll keep letting us get into Minecraft, right? <laughs> okay. So click on this settings tab right here in Minecraft. And we're just going to go in and change one thing. Okay. So click on your settings here. And <clears throat> you're going to come down. You're going to scroll down to um, on this left side. You're going to scroll down to the audio button here. Okay. So we're just going to go down and find audio. <clears throat> That's just the sounds that Minecraft makes, which, you know, it's great to hear if we have headphones on, but mm -hmm. uh, if there's 15 or 20 of us in a classroom, not so much. So we're going to click the audio button, and then we're just going to take this slider here, and we're going to slide it all the way to zero. Okay, so we're going to slide this slider all the way to zero, so it basically turns our sound off. Um, if you have headphones, you know, you don't need to do that, but... Definitely without headphones, I'd turn that off because um, your teacher will be happier. Trust me, I've been teaching for a while. I have students in Minecraft. <laughs> it makes me happier. All right, once you get that slid over, we're going to go click on this um, back arrow here up at the top left corner. Uh, we're going to get out of our settings. And we're going to go back to this main menu right here. Okay? We're going to get into a world today where we can build our habitat. So uh, let's click play. <clears throat> from this main screen, we click play, and then we get some options here. Um, the one that we're looking for is this bottom left. It says create new. We're going to create a new world um, to get started in. So if you click create new, and then once you're here, you're going to click templates. Okay, we're going to click on that templates page because um, we're going to create a new template. Okay, good so far. <clears throat> And then um, for me, the one we're looking for is blocks of grass, but for some of you, you might have to click view more templates, okay? Uh, mine's there because I use it a lot, but for most of you, if you're not in Minecraft a lot, you're going to click view more templates. And then we're going to go to um, subject kits. Sorry, we're not going to go to Starter subject worlds, kit. Yeah. Back up. I, I had a brain freeze there for just a moment. So we're going <laughs> to click the back and we're going to go to starter world. Yes. I apologize for that. And then from here, we're going to click on biomes. And then um, here, blocks of grass wow. will be somewhere here. Uh, mine's right in the middle of the top here, but you may have to scroll down to look for it. Um, but you should choose it now. Um, if um, you would prefer a different biome because you're building a habitat, you can. Um, I'm going to choose blocks of grass, and for younger kids, you know, this is just a simple world. There's no trees in the way, so it just allows me to have that time to build. So I'm going to choose blocks of grass, and for those of you who are just starting, you may choose blocks of grass as well, just because it'll be easy for us to build. Okay, so I'm going to choose that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click Create World, because that's going to get us started in our, our world. Okay, so click Create World, and should get this world to come up for us. I'll give you a few minutes. Make sure you're there. And remember, teachers, if you've got questions, you can put them in chat. I'll be monitoring it while Mr. Hawkins is chatting. And Absolutely. you can also um, ask us because you've got uh, unmutable you can unmute. Perfect. And do we get, there are some teachers, there are some people that came in late. So did yep. we make sure we get them? Okay. We so did. 
if you're looking at my screen, you can see out in front of me is just an empty blocks of grass world. And hopefully you can also see the crosshairs right in the middle of my screen. The crosshairs are controlled by my mouse. So if I put my mouse in one hand, um, this is basically me. If you just stood up in, from where you're at right now and just turned slowly in a circle, that's what your mouse does, okay? And so your mouse can point the direction that you want to move. And then from there, if you push W on your keyboard, you will move in the directions towards that where that crosshair is pointing. Okay, if I turn right, I'm going to slowly go over to the right. All right, so that's just kind of movement. Um, S moves you backwards, so if you need to move backwards just to, to get out of the way. Once I look at the ground, you can see on the ground that um, there's a, an outline box there, and that's where I would place something if I had anything in my hands. Um, or also it's where I would destroy things, also known as mine. And so you can see in the bottom right corner of my, um, of my computer screen, you can see where it says the word mine. So if I click that button, I will actually break that block. Okay, so just so you're aware of that. Um, but um, I can also move around. Um, the other thing I need to be aware of is E on your keyboard. So E stands for everything. It's your inventory. It's where you can find all the items that you want to build with. And as we're building habitats today, you know, just because um, the item in my inventory says wool doesn't mean I can't use that for my habitat because I'm kind of looking maybe for more of a, like a color option. And so there's lots of different things I can build with in my inventory. So if everybody pushes E on their keyboard, um, you can look through some items. And what you're going to do is, once you find something, so maybe this jungle wood planks, if I click it with the left click on my mouse button, it will actually pick it up and put it, attach it to my cursor. I can drag that down to my hot bar, which is down at the bottom, and I can place it in one of the slots. So now I have some planks that I can build with. Um, maybe I want to add a um, fence around my habitat. So I'm going to click on that and drag it down and put it in the hot bar slot number two. Um, maybe I need some, um, as I'm scrolling through here, what else do I need in my habitat? Maybe I need some stone bricks. So I'm going to click those and drag those down. Um, what else? What else would I need? Some glass, maybe, for some windows? I'm not sure. I'm just putting things in there. Um, but I can put things down into my hotbar for use later. And so um, as you start to build and you realize, oh, I need some more things, uh, remember that E is for inventory. Uh, I, I remember it as everything because that's all of your building supplies. Um, and then we're going to close out of our uh, inventory to go back into our world. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing I need to grab. I apologize. I broke that grass block, so I'm going to grab it. It's in um, this tab here that stands for kind of your world building things. I'm going to click the grass block, so I'm going to add it to my inventory. And then I'm going to close out of my inventory. Okay? Now, right here's the hole. So if I move my um, crosshairs to cover that hole, um, and then I look at my hotbar, and right now in my hotbar you can see that slot number one is highlighted. Um, if I push the number two on my keyboard, that'll move it to hotbar spot number two. And then my grass blocks are in slot number five. So on my keyboard, if I push the number five key, it will choose that blocks of grass. Now, if I put my crosshairs where I want to build, you can see that the side of this block is outlined. If I right click, so you can see on the right hand corner of my screen, it says place. So if I right click, it will place that block and fill in the hole I just made, okay? So I am going to, um, let's say I want to start building with uh, my slot number three, the stone bricks. If I look at the ground and click, it will place the block there. If I want to place one next to it, I just aim next to it. Uh, if I want to place one on top, I just put my crosshairs on the top of the block, okay? And so that's just how you can start to build something. Now, in Minecraft, once you get two blocks high, you can no longer place anything up there. So we want to know how to fly. So if you look at the controls on the left side, it shows me to fly. I just push the space bar two times. So if I push it two times quick, it will get me up in the air. Now, from there, if I hold it down, I will fly way up into the air. And now I can't build either. Okay, so 
to get back down to the ground, I can hold the shift key and that will just lower me back down to the ground slowly. Spacebar takes me back up. You guys can all try this. And then if I want to stop flying, I just push the spacebar twice and I'll crash to the ground. Now, that's okay in creative world because no damage can, can befall on you. So that's okay to crash down sometimes. But if I want to place something on top of those two blocks, now I can fly up just a little ways, point my crosshairs at those, and I can now build my wall higher. And I just slowly keep flying up as I place. Okay? So um, some things about, um, you know, as you're going in, you go back into your inventory uh, to find more blocks. You can drag them down into your hotbar slots. Um, you can change your hotbar slots, which, and if you look at my hand on the right side, you can see that sometimes it looks like a hand, and then other times it looks like the block that I'm holding on to. So if you're not sure what block you're holding on to, just look at the item in your hand, and then you get controls that tells you can place or mine or drop. Um, dropping them really doesn't do you any good. Um, it just gets rid of the, all the blocks from your hotbar. So, um, but it looks like we're ready to build. Um, I think what we can, uh, we're, we know how to move around. Um, we know how to get up in the air and get back down to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, we can look up at the sky. You can look down the ground with your mouse. Okay, so your mouse looks up and down and sideways. And then W moves you forward. Spacebar lets you fly if you double tap it. Okay, any questions about how to move? I feel like it's time to kind of see if we can put all those skills to use. For some of us, we're going to be able to build quicker than others. Students that have been with us in the past, I know that you guys are builders, so you're ready to go. Oh, so, Mrs. Santiago's class is hard at yes. work. <laughs> and those of you that struggle a little more, it's okay. We're okay with that. This is a good learning experience. But um, So today, we're just going to look at our habitat. We're going to build a habitat for our animal. Remember, there's four parts to that. Okay, there's the shelter piece, there's the space, you know, the animal needs space, they need food, and they need, uh, Mrs. Dunbar, what's that last one? I forgot. Shelter, food, water, and yeah, water. fourth thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I think I missed water the first time. So four things in your habitat, students, as you start building today. Um, we're going to give you, uh, looks like about, what, 20 minutes, Miss Dunbar? 20 minutes is correct. It should be on that next slide that you yeah, have in your presentation. To that next slide of my presentation, I'm going to have this up for you guys. You can see. So remember, here's our task that we're doing. Okay, we're going to build that. Um, I'm going to give you. T I'm going to start your time right now. Um, we do, you know, encourage you when you're done, students, because we know you're going to do some amazing things. Uh, we do want you to share. So be prepared to share with us and your classmates because we're super excited to see what you have. Ms. Dunbar, you have Very else? excited. Uh, no, I, I really am glad that you showed them the biomes because the kids who have been here before, obviously, if you wanted to do a polar bear, you wouldn't want to build it in the mountains, right? You'd want to start with an ice ice uh, ice biome so if you wanted to choose a specific biome for your habitat not a bad idea um if you're just starting out mr hawkins is right blocks of blocks of blocks of grass blocks of grass yeah. yeah okay that always sounds funny to me blocks <laughs> of grass is, is the easiest one to start in but think about what your think about what animal right you're going to be doing oh mr hawkins how do we get an yes. animal oh that's a good question so how do Some, we spawn? Not, not all animals, of course, but in yeah, yeah. E, um, for, for everything, remember, um, I can go into um, these mob eggs down here. So I'm just um, in the kind of um, grass block, kind of the world blocks here. And as I come down to the mob eggs, when I click on that plus sign, I can oh. see lots of different animals now of course there's not going to be everything you need but if you did lions you could spawn a cat right so if i drag that yep. down in my inventory and then i'm going to go down to the ground because i feel like throwing it from the air is not a good <laughs> idea um, but if i um, look at the ground and i place this item just like i would place a block now i have a cat now you can see that what? one's black if i place it again yep. i might get oh that one kind of looks more like uh, one that I might find in the wild. So uh, yeah. they will wander off though. 
if you don't give them a place to stay. So maybe adding animals could be closer to the end of your build. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's yeah. also polar bears in here too. So if you there can, are, there are. Yeah. So some different animals. So if you want to keep, course, yeah. not everything, but some choices. You may have to build it. If you chose draft, you may have to build your draft out of blocks, which I've seen that maybe. happen before too. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, okay. no, that's that's perfect. Perfect. So some choices for you. And obviously it looks like maybe some panda bears in there as well, too. Oh, there are lots. And and Mr. Hawkins made a great suggestion. Build the habitat first, then put the animal in. And you know, sometimes my students build a little fence around so when they want to showcase something, the animals are there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although it's not a real habitat, right? If they're fenced, that's called a zoo. <laughs> And uh, while the students are building, and remember, while they're building, teachers, you can come off mute and ask questions. Students can come up and show their work. Uh, but we also have a lot of people here from Clear Creek ISD. Welcome, welcome, Clear Creek represent. And uh, if you have any questions for us about Minecraft or using it in the classroom, uh, Mr. Hawkins and I would be very happy to answer your questions. So we can use this time for adult questions or for kid questions, or I know the kids are not listening to us right now. I can see them, they are so focused. Well, and that's the beautiful thing about it because they're building with purpose. That's right. Right? Oh, Miss Santiago, I love watching your class. And they're not afraid to ask a question. That's another super important thing which shows me you've got a great classroom because they're not afraid to come up and say, hey, I got a question. Nice. They keep adding new animals, don't they, Mr. Hawkins? Uh, they, yeah, they definitely added more. Um, I think Fox recently, the bee for sure recently. Mm -hmm. the students from Dunbar's digital domain, you can write in the chat what animals uh, you like spawning in Minecraft for me, because I know we've got some interesting ones and you're always up on which animals they've just added. So if anyone from my class wants to uh, add that, please do. Oh, the fireflies? Deanne, I didn't realize there were fireflies. Oh, nice. Axel, oh, look, look, look. Oh, look at Miss Santiago's class. Oh, and he even has a sign. What's the sign say? It's a little far away. I don't know. Maybe they can come Can you come off mute, Miss Santiago, and read it for us? Hold on. Go ahead. How many things in the coral and need water to survive? You need to eat the things in the coral and need water to survive. Yay! Nice. That was awesome. That's perfect. And we didn't even one. mention it. And look what he did. He used a sign to put his his uh, knowledge and his evidence there. Excellent. Wow. Oh, axolotls. Olivia tells me frogs are coming. Josiah. Oh, I love frogs. Axolotls. Those were recent. I know my students got really excited. Even even when we were building things like roller coasters, they were like, "There's an axolotl over there." I'm like, "Why is there an axolotl?" Because we can. <laughs> okay. Because they're cute. <laughs> they're cute. Nice. I haven't seen the fireflies, Deanne. I got to go back and look for those. Oh, we've got another one coming. Oh, look at the pandas. Some pandas. All right, some trees there. Oh, I see oh, some bamboo over in the corner. I was going to say, that's what they need in there. It is in their habitat, the bamboo they need. Outstanding. Oh, I think Outst there's a baby panda in there, too. Look at that cute Aww. guy. <laughs> oh, Harshot, you like foxes and bees? Yeah, the bees are cool. Bees are super important. We're losing bees. We need to uh, do something to keep that bee population going. Let's see. Do we have any other students on that are, are able to share besides Miss Santiago's class? Um, I thought we had Mr. Aguilar's class. I don't know if they're still here. I haven't seen them on if their camera's on. As I show, Mr. Aguilar has 26 third to fifth graders. They may still be building. Totally. That's okay. Mm -hmm. 
So a question for our friends from Clear Creek, all, all the adults. Have you have you played Minecraft before? Have you worked with it? Ms. Phillips, have you used it? Yes. Are you a Minecraft maven, Ms. Phillips? No. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Soon. That's what. Yeah. We've been talking about that. You always add the word yet. I am not one yet. Yeah. The gosh, I don't know. Maybe even remember how many years ago it was at an educational conference and they had a, a session. So I sat in on it and I remember I was too embarrassed to tell everybody. I walked right into the water and I had no clue how to get out of it. So like for 20 minutes, I just sat there trying to figure it out. <laughs> I've gotten better. I flew up into the sky and couldn't get back down. Oh, no. I was in the clouds <laughs> trying to build. Hard to do that. Oh, Olivia, is that like an octopus, the L.A.? Do you see that in chat, Mr. Hawkins? Yeah. I haven't What is an L.A.? That's a good question. Looks like an octopus, but I don't know. Interesting. Thank you, Olivia. It's okay about the caps. I get it. She just really wanted to be heard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got about 11 minutes left, and I see, oh, in Mrs. Santiago's class, they're standing up and working. This is how engaged they are. I don't even think they realize they're standing up. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's because the students load, um, they upload their results to Seesaw so mom and dad can see it. So they're all signing on to Seesaw. Oh, that's great. It. Oh, I love it. Oh, how cool. So their families get to watch what they do as well. And that's that's another thing that like the first conference, I don't know what you do, Mr. Hawkins, to get your families uh, understanding why we use Minecraft. But the first conference, actually the welcome to Dunbar's class, I've got a, a few things where I show past things that students have done in Minecraft. Like we've had students who have, just for you adults who are here, we've had students who have recreated entire scenes from novels in Minecraft and they use the uh, video recording from PowerPoint and they have a student who's the director and they open up the PowerPoint, they join the Minecraft game and they film everything and they follow the action as the other students are moving through and acting out the scenes. So we've redone scenes from uh, Number of the Stars, we've redone scenes from Dear Mr. Henshaw, we're fifth grade, um, Coraline. It, it's just really amazing to watch the students really focus in on showing us the important parts of the story or adding on to the story. Um, and it's it, it's kind of cool when they use PowerPoint to record it because then they can it also records their voices if they're all together. So it's lots of good things they can do to show their their knowledge in language arts. Anything you've done, Mr. Hawkins? Interesting for language arts in Minecraft? Um, definitely building scenes for <laughs> stories. Students love that. Um, but I was going to say that you know now at this point of the year right now we're halfway through the school year right so students are now asking like i'll give them an assignment and something and they'll come up and say hey could i do this in minecraft instead and, and as long as it fits the you know the outcome then i'm all for it and students being able to, to to jump in and you know be able to to um you know speak for themselves and what they can do i, I think that's just another thing that you know empowering for the students so love it mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done um, author reports that way too. We've had kids um, who have made like busts of Beverly Cleary and of J.K. Rowling and and their favorite authors in Minecraft. So they, these crazy like 8-bit looking busts and then they use the signs around the base to write, you know, like when they were born, what they've written, background, you know, summaries of some of the stories. So there are lots of different ways that you can use Minecraft and language arts that just get the kids more engaged. And it doesn't have to be the only part of the lesson, obviously. It can be the extension to the lesson. Um, we even did a STEM challenge once. We were reading uh, Dear Mr. Henshaw, which is about a, uh, the little boy. His dad is a truck, an 18-wheel truck driver. And we had a challenge to uh, – we had a little picture of an 18-wheel truck 
And they had to build that as quickly as they could, who could build the 18 wheel truck fastest in Minecraft. So we had these crazy, just, you know, they'd have to come up to my computer. We had it on the screen and we'd time it, you know, just something fun, extension of the story. So yeah, a little over seven minutes left. Are there any other teachers slash students that want to share their habitats with us this morning? We'd love to see them. Oh, I love seeing them, yes. We read um, the Lemonade Stand. Do you remember the Lemonade War, Mr. Hawkins? Yes. We read that, and after we finished it and did all the traditional testing and, and essays, then the fun extension was, what would your Lemonade Stand look like? Oh, yeah, I love that. After idea. reading the story, yeah. A lot of good vocabulary words in that one, so. Lots of different ways to to extend lessons with Minecraft, which just gives us more engagement, helps students to be thinking in in different ways. And actually, they get more excited about stuff. They don't even realize they're excited. They don't even realize they're learning more, which is fun. We uh, use Minecraft to write stories. Ooh, and tell me how you do that. Well, they use the book and quill, right? Mm. And so mm -hmm. they can build the scenes for their own story. And I don't know about you, Miss Dunbar, but when I ask my students to write stories or write, they are not super excited. Um, but to to, ha to tell them they can hmm. write it in Minecraft, using the book and quill, add pictures, you know, as Ooh. so they didn't complain at all. And some of my, <laughs> you know, my more um, less likely to write students, yeah. they uh, they jumped right on board and and, and actually. You know, it's some amazing stories, so that was fun. Oh, that's you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually steal that idea because we're doing um, Do the big project in our our language arts and our online curriculum is to write a science fiction story, a narrative. And uh, when you said that, it was like, wait a minute, yeah. they could write it in Minecraft, and they you could even do space in Minecraft, yep. Definitely. pretty dramatically as well. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> I like it. You bet. And that's really the other thing that we're hoping to build here is a community and some connections so that if you've got questions or you just want to brainstorm something, Mr. Hawkins and I are always happy to answer questions, to uh, chat with you. We'll give you our emails at the end. Feel free to reach out to us because that's what we're here for is to build enthusiasm and to, because we're, we're classroom teachers and we, we've we seen over the years how Minecraft has really engaged the students. And as with any manipulative, Minecraft really is a manipulative, isn't it? And as with any manipulative, you can't use it all the time, but using it strategically and in certain places, it's amazing. Definitely gets the students' attention too because they just don't know when to expect Minecraft and when not to. <laughs> That's so true. they're always there. They're like, oh, Minecraft today? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So, fun stuff. Yeah, we're an online academy. So we even at our online academy have a channel for, it's called uh, Minecraft Showcase. So kids can take screen snaps of things that they're most proud of and just post it in there for fun. So I don't have a, a wall where I can share things, but it's our digital wall where kids share Um their creations in Minecraft, which is kind of fun. Four minutes, huh? Four minutes. And, and you know, we probably have definitely some students that are done. Nobody yeah, else is I... off mute. But um, as you're continuing to build, um, teachers as well. You, know, you can you can throw some questions out to your students about you know as they start to share their habitats. Even if they don't want to come, you know, online to share them, maybe definitely have them share with one another. And just some some you know questions for thought. Like as you're sharing habitat, um, why is it important? What you know what would be different? Um, what if <laughs> you know they were thrown into a different habitat? Um, just some of those types of questions mm -hmm. um, to follow up with. So. Well, and that's a nice thing because it, to go. yeah, it becomes a platform for them to talk about what they've learned, right? So being able to uh, have a student show the Minecraft, but to say, uh, like the young student did that showed us the sign and read it to us, being able to just convey to us, oh, well, the, the panda bear needs bab, 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 
bamboo. So we've got to have bamboo in the in the habitat. And of course, there's a river nearby because they want to be, they need to have water, you know. So just having them talk about those things that are necessary in a habitat while they're showing you their Minecraft, it's another way to get that lesson. I think Mrs. Santiago's class is somewhere in another part of the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Are they seesawing? They must be seesawing. <laughs> no, they're off to lunch. <laughs> oh, they're off to lunch? Oh, we always right. catch you. We always catch you at your lunch time, but we do appreciate you being here, Miss Santiago. I uh, love seeing your class. <laughs> Thank you. They love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's like, wait, where did they go? <laughs> um, do we have any other classes? We do. I see Miss Saldivar's first grade class. I'm not sure if they're able to come off and share, but if they are, that would be great. If not, hopefully they're sharing within their classrooms. Hopefully. Um, because that's where ideas come from, right? Once mm -hmm. you start sharing. So, love it. What are you thinking, Mr. Redegar? You look like you're deep in thought. <laughs> Try to picture all the ways he can uh, get his <laughs> teachers to use this. I'm having trouble deciding which animal I'm going to add to my habitat. <laughs> I love them all well, so much. It depends on the habitat, doesn't it? I think I usually default to rhinos, though. Ooh, nice. Nice. I like it. Good. It says Miss Saldiar's class says hello, and they are sharing with themselves. Oh, oh I'm so Perfect. glad. Well, maybe we should just slide over to the next slide then, because that's the one about sharing. But because we have what four minutes left? Looks like one, one minute left. Oh, so. I meant in the whole session. Oh yes, I wasn't even paying attention to that part. <laughs> So they're already sharing their habitat and telling why their animal needs that specific habitat. And then for an extension, if you go to the next slide, what would happen if your animal was not in the habitat it needed to be in? Or maybe it's the one after that. Attention first, Mr. Yeah, so there you go. Time. So <laughs> <laughs> Creeping up on us. Yes, let's, let's have you all come back. Um, I know it's tough. It is. Um, but we would love you to... Um, definitely set it up for viewing so that other students can share. So if you're not at that point yet, um, Tammy, I'll let you take over there. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, hopefully you you're, and I interrupted. <laughs> you're no, 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 they're fine. We're a team. So <laughs> hopefully your teacher is going to give you a little more time so you can share more with your classmates, what you've set up, or maybe you need a couple more minutes. It's up to your teacher, but we want to pose this extension question and that's the next slide. And the extension question is what would happen? There we go. If your animal was in the wrong habitat, and why might that happen? Ooh, this has actually happened before because I live in California and about 120 years ago, they introduced the striped bass into our rivers. Was it there before? This wasn't its habitat. How did it affect it? Well, it eats the salmon. <laughs> I'll tell you that. So it can really change a habitat if an animal gets introduced to one that isn't its native habitat. So think about what would happen if you put the panda bear in, oh, I don't know, the desert. Ooh. Not a good thing. So there will be, Mr. Hawkins, next slide, there will be digital certificates for students as well as hard copies being sent to classrooms. And you want to talk about the survey? Yeah, um, definitely, you know, adults, teachers, you guys that were here with us today, we definitely want to get some feedback from you guys. Um, you know, this is um, something new for us coming into classrooms and teaching students uh, from, from a long distance away. But, um, you know, we... Tammy and I feel like it, it's going pretty well, but we want to hear your feedback as well. See what we can improve on. Uh, what can we change? What can we, we do to make it better? Um, so this link will go into the It's there. Chat. It's in chat. Um, it's in chat. So if you would just take some time and fill it out. It, it's not a very long one, but it definitely gives us some, um, some feedback about uh, the things that we're doing and, and what you liked and, and, and what we could do to improve. And, and we'll be back um, in February. Um, to teach some science with Minecraft, and so um, I don't know about Tammy, but I love using Minecraft with science. Uh, it just works works well. Uh, but you know, 
and 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 getting those ideas from from others about how you can incorporate it in your classroom as well. So, and if you need to reach out to us, you have questions you're like, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about this lesson with Minecraft, I'm just not quite sure how to set it up. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, myself, I know for sure, uh, willing to help out, give you ideas. I love seeing teachers use Minecraft, and I know that uh, Ms. Dunbar does as well. So, absolutely. Any last closing? I don't think so, but we look forward to seeing you all again. Tell your friends February 22nd. And uh, we loved having all of our friends from Clear Creek here. Great to see you all representing. Hopefully, if we can be of any assistance, our emails are up there on the screen. Um, I think I can pop them into chat as well. So if you want to ask us questions, feel free to do that. We are here for you. The spacing is weird because I pasted it from a PowerPoint. Oh, well. But we were very happy to have you here. It was recorded, I believe, Mr. Hawkins. So that could yes. be available at yep. a later date. Um, but let us know what we can do to make it better and make it more uh, uh more successful for classrooms. We think it's going pretty well. We've gotten some great feedback. We thank you for your time and for joining us for Minecraft Live Lessons. And we look forward to seeing you February 22nd. Goodbye from yes. California. And students, thank you for uh, you know being amazing for your teachers today. Uh, I'm sure that, that uh, you know, you're super excited about using Minecraft in the classroom and you would love to have it keep going. So uh, yeah, keep being awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. Here. Have a great day. See you guys next month. All right, Mr. Hawkins. All right. See you next time. Sounds good. Bye, Ms. Phillips. That.